Come, baby. Enjoy this great game. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Hum Baby Baseball channel. This is Eric, and today we have actually some pretty big baseball news. Wanted to go over these six new members of the Hall of Fame. Uh, as far as actual Major League Baseball right now, no, no progress. It's all locked out, no moves, no nothing, nothing to talk about. So sorry about that. But as far as the Hall of Fame, big, big news. There are six new members. I want to go over each of them really quickly and send out a big congratulations to them although most of them have passed away unfortunately which is pretty irritating that you know the Hall of Fame takes so long to elect some of these guys that they have to pass away first so they can't really enjoy the moment but hopefully some of their family members can and uh, be very proud of all of these members of the Hall of Fame who are definitely deserving in my opinion and uh, I'm really happy about it overall so we want to start though with a guy who I've heard of since I was six years old since I first became a baseball fan and just always assumed he was a, was a Hall of Famer until a few years ago when I found out he wasn't and I was like what Gil Hodges ain't a Hall of Famer Gil Hodges had a ridiculously good major league career and then he was a really good manager helping the 1969 Miracle Mets win the World Series but as far as his career he hit 370 home runs over 1200 RBI over 1900 hits Eight-time All-Star, three straight gold gloves, World Series championships in 55 and 59 with the Dodgers, one in Brooklyn, one in L.A. And during his best years, only Duke Snyder hit more home runs. This dude had more home runs than anyone in Major League history as a right-hander when he retired behind only Willie Mays and Jimmy Fox. And then he went on to be a really good manager five years with the Washington Senators. Then he went on to the Mets and, like I said, helped them win a World Series in 69. I mean, he had a great career. Unfortunately, he passed away. He should have done been in a long time before 2021, but you know what? Better late than never, as they say. So congratulations to Gil Hodges for getting in. Also, Buck O'Neill is getting in. This dude was an absolute legend. I really enjoyed him in the baseball documentary series by ken burns which by the way me and jim from ball cap sports we pretty much did an entire review recap of it there is a playlist so check that out um but buck o'neill was just legendary on and off the field he had a nice negro leagues career i don't know if his career itself is hall of fame worthy but then when you take into account after his career he was a great coach for a long time in fact he was the first african-american coach in major league baseball then he was a scout for a long time he was also a manager in the negro leagues but he was also just a pioneer off the field in promoting the negro leagues and helping black players get an opportunity in the major leagues and helping opening the hall of fame um negro leagues hall of fame museum in kansas city which i've been to it's absolutely awesome and he was just a a, a very strong public speaker and promoting all of this um, to help the game move forward which it finally did and buck o'neill was just instrumental in all of that and, and helping the game be accept, which it should have been from day one, of course, but the game should be accepting to anyone and everyone, you know, who wants to play. And luckily, it became that way after all, lots of struggles. But Buck O'Neill was was just key in a lot of that. So Buck O'Neill, I think, for his not just his performance on the field, but his coaching career, his managing uh, manager uh, manager Matt <laughs> can't speak his career as a manager. His career as a public speaker, which clearly is much better speaker than I am, okay? Not to mention, I believe that he was the one who scouted and helped a man get to the big leagues you might have heard of named Lou Brock. So uh, this dude was absolutely a legend. Unfortunately, he passed away, but Buck O'Neill certainly deserving of enshrinement. Then you have uh, Mini Mignoso. How the hell is Mini Mignoso not in the Hall of Fame? He had an extremely long career. His career started in the Negro Leagues in the, like, 1946, and his last year in the big leagues was 1980. He is a 13-time All-Star, three-time Gold Glover. Finished his career with a 299 average, just under 300, over 2,000 hits. Was just masterful at getting on base, getting hit by the pitch if he had to, working the count, working the walk, and he retired with an on-base percentage of a 387. He passed away at age 89 in 2015, which tells you that the, the committee had multiple opportunities to put him in, but they would not vote for him. And so now that he's passed away, he gets in. I mean, it's just, it's kind of sad, but at least he's getting in, and hopefully he has some family members that can uh you know be there to represent him 
at the ceremonies because Mini Minoso is definitely a Hall of Famer and, and had a great career. And it's just sad, but uh, glad he's getting in finally. So Minoso, Hodges, O'Neal getting in. Also, shout out to one very old time player. We're going back to the 19th century for someone who's finally now getting in, and that's Bud Fowler, whose career spanned about 25 years. He started his career as a 14 year old, and he is the earliest known African American player to play in organized professional baseball. Imagine what he went through playing for decades in professional baseball in the late 1800s. We know what Jackie Robinson went through in the 1940s. We're talking about the 1800s. And he played in various leagues like the Western League. And unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of stats from that time. But when you have someone who played that long, and if you do some research, there are lots of Good things said about him. That he was a hardworking player, a genius on the ball field, intelligent and gentlemanly in his conduct. And you just look at how long he played. Eventually, he did play in the Negro Leagues. But like I said, a professional career spanning 25 years plus. I mean, this guy probably should have had a plaque a long time ago. But I can understand why it took a while. Obviously, like I said, there's not even stats from the time period that he played. And at first, the Hall of Fame was more for major league players who played in the modern era where we have stats and everything like that but this guy gets his plaque in the hall of fame so really happy for bud fowler hopefully he has some descendants relatives still around who can uh, you know represent him at the ceremonies as well but there are two guys getting in who are still with us thank god two guys that can actually be there at the ceremony and that's Tony Oliva and Jim Cott. So a big shout out to both of them for getting him. Jim Cott had an extremely long career. His debut year was 1959. His final year was 1983. He made three all-star teams, 16-time Gold Glover, 1982 World Series champion with the St. Louis Cardinals. But he picked up nearly 300 wins, 283 total wins and won 20 or more games three times, including 25 in 1966, a year that he had a 2.75 ERA and 41 starts. He had 19 complete games that year. I would urge everyone to go check out this dude's stats, okay, because they are mind-blowing. Like, he had an amazing career, extremely long. Endurance is just incredible. You just don't see it anymore, and I just can't believe it took this long to get in, for him to get in. Obviously, he had a very long career as a, as a broadcaster as well but Jim Cott certainly deserving and so is Tony Oliva. Tony O was a rookie of the year he actually led the big leagues in batting average in his first two seasons hit 323 in 64 321 in 65 he also led the league in batting average in 1971 ended up hitting 304 for his career eight-time all-star gold glove winner Played his entire career with the Minnesota Twins. They retired his number a long time ago. They gave him a statue a long time ago. The Twins have done known this dude's a Hall of Famer for a long time, and it just took forever to finally get in. And luckily, he is still around. So is Jim Cott. So I'm really happy about that, that they get to know that they're Hall of Famers. And, um, you know... It took long enough, but hey, this is the way the election process works, obviously, and it's going to be really interesting to see, you know, if anyone gets in in the actual, you know, a regular election that the that the the that the writers take place in, uh, take part in the voting. Which, um, yeah, I, uh, who knows what's going to happen there? That's that's extremely intriguing, you know, with Bonds and Clemens on that ballot, along with Big Poppy and. Uh, a rod and a lot of other guys who i think should have been in but we'll see uh it's going to be really interesting but um i'm impressed that, the, that these guys got elected because oftentimes the committee will be pretty uh <laughs> yeah pretty stingy on who they vote for there's one guy i want to give a shout out to who's for whatever reason can't seem to get in and that's dick allen who i think should be in i don't know what's going on with that but they just won't vote him in he will get in at some point but uh, not this time. So anyway, congratulations to these six guys who are definite Hall of Famers in my book. I'm really happy for all of them and their families. And this is awesome. Some good news coming out of the baseball world. We're not getting too much of that lately. You guys have a great day. Hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe. Let me know what you guys think of these Hall of Famers. We'll talk to you all next time. See ya. When the Giants come to town, it's bye bye. It's bye-bye, baby. It's 
Mysteries in the making at Oracle Park.